a little bit about myself. I'm a small town emergency room physician. Um, I live in this great big country of Canada, way down that little corner there of British Columbia. Um, one of the reasons why I live where I live is because I don't like traffic. And um, this picture we see at the bottom there, that's taken about 15 kilometers from where I live. Um, a nice little hiking trip not far from home. Uh, my university, however, is about 800 kilometers from where I live. Um, and I get students shipped from across the province to me to come join me in the emergency department. Now, I became first involved in Wikipedia in 2008 after coming across, I was working a night shift, I was looking around the internet, and I came across this article that was horrible. It was <laughs> full of errors. And then I saw an edit button, and, and I realized that, that I could fix the internet. And um, I sort of got hooked at that point, and I, and I imagine probably many people come to Wikipedia in that way, um, and I've been active ever since. So, you know, here we are talking about glams, and you know, half of us are Wikipedians, half of us are with cultural institutes, and you know, the question is, why do people want to work with us at Wikipedia? You know, we're mostly just a bunch of volunteers, um, and this, when it comes to medicine, is why people want to work with us. Wikipedia is really what the world is reading. Uh, this is a, a recent paper myself and Andrew G. West uh, published in the Journal of Medical Internet Research um, based on 2014 data. We took a website called uh, Alexa. Uh, it's actually similar web and it, it gives us page views for different languages and we sort of isolated the page views that Wikipedia gets and we compared it to the other big internet health sites. And the two other big internet health sites globally is the NIH and WebMD. You know, uh, World Health Organization is, is, is a tiny fraction of the global view, viewership of health content. NIH is another tiny fraction. And it appears that Wikipedia is the single most used medical resource globally. And that is why those who want to get information out to people wish to work with us. Another reason. Wikipedia is not only extensively used by the general public, uh, public for health information, but it's also used extensively by medical students. So, you know, Nesta is doing great work developing Wikipedia, putting pathology images onto Wikipedia, and while that might not be very interesting to the general public, if you're a medical student, it is. Um, and it makes Wikipedia more useful to a larger group of people. And they've done some surveys, this one from 2013, looking at medical students in very rich countries who have access to the world's best resources. So these are students at like UCSF and Harvard. And they asked them, you know, here you are, you have this world-class library. You have everything you can possibly imagine of the highest quality. Why are you using Wikipedia? Uh, because 94% of them are. And they answered, well, Wikipedia is easy to use. I can pull up my cell phone. I don't need to hit half a dozen, enter half a dozen passwords, forget what my password is, remember my 15-letter university ID. Uh, um, and next reason is Wikipedia is understandable. You come to Wikipedia, and while people criticize us for being complicated, we're still way less complicated than the published literature. So you can come to Wikipedia, you can find a general overview, um, and then the final reason is Wikipedia is consumer friendly, so it's easy to access. Now, another recent survey is they, they looked at the UK public, and they asked the UK public, you know, how reliable do you consider the authors of Wikipedia versus the authors of these other sources? And, and thankfully, you know, they consider the Sun, the Mirror, the Mail, and the Express very unreliable. They still read it, but, but they actually don't believe it, which is reassuring to those of us in the healthcare um, field. Um, you know, Wikipedia sort of ranked around the BBC. Our reputation, our, you know, uh, how reliable people feel we are isn't as high as, you know, Encyclopedia Britannica or more formal publications. But we're still extensively used. So um, because we're short on time, I'm just going to touch on one of my favorite collaborations, the one I've been working on since uh, 2012, uh, and that is the Medical Translation Project. Now, the Medical Translation Project, we're trying to get medical information, which mostly exists in English and Wikipedia, in and a few major European languages, into as many other languages as possible. So well, Wikipedia is in 278 languages, there is a great variation in what's available in different languages. So initially we started by improving entire Wikipedia articles on the English Wikipedia. So these articles were 2,500 to 10,000 words. And we started by translating these entire articles from English into languages like Swahili. And then we received feedback that this is way too much information. 
it was way too much work for the translators. It took way too much time to get the articles ready for translation. And so we sort of switched after writing 33 of these articles, um, which are either good articles or featured articles in English Wikipedia, to concentrating just on the leads of the English articles. So we worked to improve the first three to four paragraphs of the, of the English Wikipedia article. We put it into simple English, which is important for translation. And we need to have our leads in simple English regardless. It's good for our English readers, especially those who read English as a second language. And right now we have 132 of these articles available. And we're working with two partners, two main partners, Translators Without Borders and Rubric. Um, and we're working to translate these into 100 or more languages right now. Uh, so one of our big successes is we took our article on Ebola this last August. We sent it out to our team of translators, and we now have Ebola content in 110 languages. Um, and interestingly, w through some research with a, w with a gentleman from Microsoft, I asked him the question, what was the single most used source of Ebola information through Bing in the countries of Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone, the three most affected countries, and the answer was Wikipedia. And we beat out CNN, which was second, CDC, which was third, and the World Health Organization, which was fourth. And right now we have translated more than four million words. Uh, this is sort of an example of one of the um, uh, three, or this is an example of a four paragraph article we're translating, rabies, uh, uh, kills more people each year than Ebola, so do many, many, many other diseases. So we're not done just now that we've translated Ebola. There's a hu huge amount more that we can do to help people out. Um, deaths from rabies are, are very, very preventable. Nobody dies from rabies in the developed world. They're mostly in the developing world due to many reasons. And getting this content out to people will help protect um, uh, the world from this disease. So we try to make it simple. We, we, we keep it short so that it's easier for people to translate. So why is this needed? As I mentioned, you know, little healthcare content exists in most languages on and off of Wikipedia other than in English and sort of 10 major rich European languages. Information is the key to managing many diseases. You know, many diseases from diarrhea. I get patients who come to my emergency department, mothers who bring in their child, and they're like, my kid has diarrhea, so I haven't given them anything to eat or drink because as soon as I put something in their mouth, it just comes out the other end. So, you know, they, they're lucky. They, they have easy access to, to doctors in Canada. I'm able to educate that mother and, you know, save that child's life because it's, it's simple you know when a child has diarrhea you give them plenty of fluids if they throw it up you give them more if they throw it up you give them more and you keep doing that you know and 95 percent of the time it works and five percent of the time you need to give them iv fluids um some research done by one of our partners found that more than half of people in africa said that a friend or family member could have been saved if they'd had information in their own language so um here's here's a, some some great graphs here's the uh on the left upper corner, there's the internet by language. If you speak English, you're exceedingly lucky. The internet is there for you. Um, there's a huge portion of the internet there for these 10 big European languages. There's a fair bit for Japanese, Chinese, and Korean. But if you look at Arabic, Hindi, and Bengali, there's almost nothing on the internet that is in your language. And you look at the other 5,000 languages that are out there, and it's a fraction of all the content. And if you look at the world by language, you see that the world by language doesn't match the internet by language. You know, most people don't speak those big languages that we discussed. There's over half the population doesn't. Wikipedia is better than the internet as a whole, but we're not as good as we should or could be. One of the other um, uh, exciting things our, our partners find in this translation project is the, 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 in, in the world of development, there's this thing called the digital last mile. How do you get information out the last step? Um, and you know, we know those in the developing world have poor access to computers, they have poor access to the internet, but they now have great access to cell phones. Uh, you go to the developing world and everybody has one. It is incredible. Um, and we have, of course, managed to convince cell phone companies to give Wikipedia access without data chargers. It's a little controversial. It hasn't been picked up as much as it should be, but there's also the chicken egg problem. You know, if if you know your if you don't have content there in your own language, Wikipedia Zero is not very useful. So 
hopefully once we get better content there, Wikipedia Zero will have a greater benefit for the world's population. Wikipedia Zero is currently available to about 450 million people in all those countries in green. So what are some of the successes? Well, some of the successes we've had is we're working in 100 languages. We're hoping to expand to more. Uh, we've translated more than 4 million words since 2012 to 2013. This is about 800 different articles that we've translated. Uh, we've had great success in some languages like Persian. Um, um, the, the, the Iranian community has been, uh, they've taken the con translations that have been done by translators of the borders and they've localized them to their own context. So, for example, our HIV AIDS article didn't have a section on HIV AIDS in Iran because most of the sources are in Persian, uh, and they took that translation and that community added paragraphs specifically on HIV AIDS in Iran to all the uh, globally um, relevant content. They also brought that article through their, their own internal featured article process within that community. Other successes, uh, <coughs> we're translating into a number of languages and, and you know, we ideally want these, uh, these efforts, these translation efforts to be uh, managed by local editors. Uh, we've had a big success in Oriya, otherwise known as Odia, which is a language of India spoken by about 45 million people. There is, um, uh, I think he's a retired physician who has decided to spend part of his retirement translating these articles and creating some of the first medical content that's freely accessible in his country's language. So really, you know, one amazing person can do a lot of amazing work. Um, Wikimedia Taiwan has joined, has partnered with us, uh, and they have partnered uh, with a medical school in Taipei. Um, and they, <coughs> the medical students, uh, as part of an education project, they're basically going through the articles that the, the base articles we in English have created, and the medical students are translating them as volunteers from English into Chinese, um, and they're finding it very useful. One of the issues medical students have is basically everywhere in the world, medical students study in English. Then when you fin finish medical school, you're supposed to practice in the language your patients actually speak. Um, and they often don't get taught that intermediate step, how do you translate everything I've learned from English into, um, let's say, Chinese. So this is a great opportunity for medical students to get practice learning how to translate from the language you're learning medicine in to the language you're going to be practicing in. And I, I'm hoping that you know, the, 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 the model that the, the Taiwan Wikimedia group has started will spread to other languages. Um, a couple others, uh, we, have a four, we have a number of for-profit companies working with us. One is a company called Rubric in South Africa. Uh, they translate our Ebola content into 20 other languages. Uh, you know, this is, you know, companies like doing pro bono stuff. They like having, um, um, being involved with not-for-profits. So Rubric um, uh, did some work in, in 20 African languages. IDIS did, is doing work in Kichin, uh, Guyana, which are South American, Central American languages. Um, so we have some, some for-profit partners who are doing work for us pro bono. And then, of course, our core group at Translators of Borders, which is a, basically a bunch of volunteer translators, uh, they're doing a lot of the translations uh, uh, as well, gradually. So um, <clears throat> this is sort of our control panel where we keep track of the whole process. We have many pages of, of, uh, uh, of this tracking so that we don't end up translating the same article twice. Um, it's, we initially did, these, did these, uh, uh, the, the progress mapping on Wikipedia, but we needed an Excel document. Our tables on Wikipedia just became too big and too slow to edit, so we ended up migrating to this uh, about a year ago. Some of the difficulties we've had, some technical words do not exist in some languages, so simplification is really important. Um, but it's difficult. Some languages are against translation and to some extent in that they want the content developed de novo in their language. So for example, Swedish, they really, they'd love the content developed from Swedish sources in Swedish. But the difficulty is most Swedish researchers are publishing in English. Uh, I spoke at an Italian conference where I was translated from English into Italian, and I asked them, what language do you publish in? Uh, and they all said English, and yet 
only a fraction of the population or the fraction of the audience actually spoke English. It was it was interesting. Um, additionally, we need language trans, uh, champions to direct the efforts. Uh, you know, we in the English community are, are developing the sources to, to, to base the translations from, uh, but those who are interested, it works really well if that community, you know, sort of helps manage the translators um, rather than uh, rather than me trying to get it in a hundred different languages. Um, so, yeah, you know, since, since we're short on time, I, I guess I'll stop there. I, I was going to speak about a copy and paste project, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, leave that to another, I'll leave that to another time.